grace, peace, and every welcome to you. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Uh, we're so pleased that you have found your way to St. Philip's Episcopal Church here in Nashville, Tennessee, for our service of Holy Eucharist. This is the celebration of Easter Day, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. After the period of Lent, the time of lament, the time of mourning and thoughtfulness, uh, we are now poised to rejoice and to celebrate, and we're glad that you are here with us. You can find uh, the liturgy online. You can follow along. It also scrolls on your screen, and I would encourage you to say the responses and the prayers along with us and to enter into the hymns as well. We're going to begin this morning with the hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Christ is risen today. Alleluia. Our triumphant holy day. Alleluia. Who did once upon the cross. Alleluia. Again, I say to you, Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 118, verses 1 through 2, 14 through 24. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. A reading from 1 Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James and then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. from the grave. 
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Grace and peace to you this Easter day, when Jesus Christ, the morning star, is risen indeed. My friends, allow me to echo uh, to you the words of St. Paul that we heard earlier. He said, I would remind you, sisters and brothers, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which you are also being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you. And as we heard the psalmist from earlier in today's service, this is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad. Now I have no idea, frankly, how St. Paul put together the message or the messages that he proclaimed But if you'll briefly permit me to share with you a little bit regarding the mechanics of how I construct a message or a sermon or a homily. I've been doing this for 27 years now, and I have created literally hundreds of sermons in a variety of ways. Some were pretty good. Some were not so good. But the pattern that I have finally settled into is this one. Early in the week, before I preach, I read through all the texts for the next Sunday. And in the Episcopal Church, it's great because we have texts that are assigned to us for each Sunday of the liturgical year, so that makes it easy. And then I I read other sermons from other pastors and priests, and, and not just Episcopal ones, although I do read those. I read Southern Baptist sermons and Evangelical sermons and Greek Orthodox sermons and ancient sermons, anywhere I can glean a little bit of wisdom or some food for thought, I mull over what I read, then I come back to the texts again a day or two later. Finally, I start writing something down and hope for the best. Now, this past week, just as if they had been highlighted on the page or lit from within two verses from this gospel passage jumped out at me, Verse 7, 
to Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome, the young man dressed in white, declares that, quote, Jesus has been raised, he is not here, and then he says this, but go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. The young man, the angel in the tomb says to Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, James and Salome, go tell his disciples and Peter that he's going ahead of you to Galilee and there you'll see him. The other verse that caught my attention and my imagination this week, just as if it was in bold print on the page, in neon blinking at me, was verse 8, which was, so they went out, the three women, so they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. They were afraid. Go tell his disciples and Peter. They did not tell anyone, for they were afraid. It's like like two uh, rhetorical bookends in in that passage. And And those just stayed on my heart and prayed on my mind all week. Think of it. In spite of all that Peter had done, and Peter denied the Lord three times publicly, in spite of all that he had done, in spite of the bitter tears that he wept as he betrayed the Lord and when the cock crowed twice, in spite of all that, still there was a message, a divine message to Peter, specifically to Peter, on the day of the resurrection. Go tell his disciples and Peter, especially Peter, the one who denied Jesus three times, to meet him in Galilee that he is raised from the dead. That is extravagant grace. It is reconciliation. It is forgiveness. And at the other bookend, we have three faithful women doing their best to honor the memory and to honor the battered physical body of their Lord And they get some incredible news from this young man dressed in white. But what do they do with the news? They flee the tomb and tell no one because they are afraid. And that's how Mark's gospel ends right there. They flee the tomb, they tell no one because they are afraid. What a strange way to end a gospel. This day, Easter Day, we proclaim the end of one story, the beginning of another story, and the years kind of roll on, don't they? How many Easter's has it been for you? How many Easter's have you come to church? Every year it is the same. It is the joyous shout, Christ is risen, right? Christ is risen, returned from the dead, come back to us, but sometimes it feels like we're caught between the bookends, caught between two worlds, between already what is before us and not yet what is to be. Go tell the disciples and Peter. He is not here. He has been raised. Backed right up against the paradox of they were afraid. They said nothing to anyone. They fled the tomb. Already, not yet. We, as followers of Jesus, proclaim him crucified and risen. In our liturgy, we proclaim, during the Eucharist, we proclaim what we refer to as the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And yet, and yet each year we know that the story is not finished We know that as time rolls on, our Easter alleluias can get drowned out by other cries, other shouts, other declarations, shouts of anger, shouts of war and hate, of pain, fear, confusion. People still lose their jobs. There there is still crime. There is still fear and uncertainty. 
relationships between people, even the strongest of relationships, can wind down and break, and people still die. We still get anxious. We still worry. Our hearts get sick, whether physically sick or sick from the burdens of the world. Dictators rise and fall. New ones are always waiting to take their place. Wars and violence are still a reality for far too many people. Jesus is risen, all is well, declares the angel, but Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome are afraid nonetheless. Yet every year, by that ancient formula of the first Sunday after the first full moon, after the equinox, Easter arrives. And we come, you and I, and we stand here before God, and we joyously, stubbornly, sometimes defiantly, proclaim Christ is risen, alleluia. Every year we declare our intention to go on living despite the reality before us. Because of the hope of this day, we go on living and loving and learning and losing, and Christ is right here beside us because of this day and the message of Easter. And the Bible does tell us that, yes, one day Jesus Christ will come again. And one day all will be reconciled to him. But there's, there's still that odd, mysterious sense of already and not yet dangling somewhere between the grace of and Peter and the worry and fear of they fled the tomb because they were afraid. Imagine, my friends, the, the sound uh, of that crash, that, that thud, rock against rock, when the door of the tomb was rolled into place. I wonder if that sound was still echoing in the minds of Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, as they came to the tomb that morning. Why did they come to the tomb? They knew they couldn't get the rock rolled back. Why did they come there? Why? Because Jesus planted within them a hope. The hope that sin and death were not, in fact, the last word. And when they went to the garden tomb that morning, that fire of hope, that, that kernel, that, that ember was smoldering and burning and waiting to break forth into flame. What joy in that moment. How, how, it, how it banished forever that terrible, awful sound of rock on rock as the tomb was closed. But now the stone is rolled back. The angel in white has words of forgiveness for Peter, the sinner, the denier, and words of joy for the three first evangelists of the church, Mary, Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome. We know from scripture, from the book of Revelation, from the vision of John, that Jesus bears forever the marks of his suffering. John saw it. We know from the Bible account in the gospels that Jesus showed Thomas the marks on his nails, on his uh, hands and feet. We know that Thomas could put his hand into the wound in his side, and the marks will always be there. Christ cannot erase the past, not even his own past, or the marks. And Christ cannot erase our marks, our suffering, our wounds, the terrible marks of our own pain. He cannot erase the crazy town that has been 2020. But today, as we celebrate, I cannot help but think that the resurrection means more to us, is sweeter to us than it has been in years past. You and I have shared two Easter's now, like none in any other memory. In this past year, truly a page has turned. The church 
has changed. Not just our congregation, but the church Catholic has changed. Life is different now, and we wonder about the future. Does it not feel to you as if we've been living in darkness, confined to a tomb? We may, even as we celebrate resurrection, even as we embrace the hope that Jesus gives us, we might still be like the three women evangelists, apprehensive, afraid, fearful. But in spite of that, my friends, we must, well, in spite of that, maybe in defiance of it, we must still be an Easter people The three women who were the first witnesses to Christ's resurrection had a hope that sustained them. And this has become our hope. We know that no matter what, God's resurrection power will prevail and will raise us up. In the end, love will win. But you know, hope can be a risky thing. I think I shared this this snippet of a poem with you last Easter. I'm going to share it again because it still works and it's still pertinent. Jack Gilbert, the poet, wrote this. We must risk delight. We must admit there will be music despite everything. Pastor Rob Bell, an evangelical pastor that I admire very much, a truth teller and a prophet, Pastor Rob Bell put it so well when he wrote a book entitled, in fact, Love Wins. And Pastor Rob writes this. Here's where I'm going to close. Rob Bell writes this. Love is what God is. Love is why Jesus came. And love is why he continues to come, year after year, to person after person. He continues, may you experience this vast, expansive, infinite, indestructible love that has been yours all along. May you discover that this love is as wide as the sky and as small as the cracks in your heart that no one else knows about. And may you know, deep in your bones, that love wins. Remember that love wins. Amen. Let us declare our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets, We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in your holy word taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these prayers which we offer unto your divine majesty, asking you to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, 
unity and concord and grant that all those who do confess your holy name may agree in the truth of your holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, John, our bishop, and Cristobal, Bishop of Littoral, Ecuador, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth your true and lively word and rightly and duly administer your holy sacraments. And in the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the church in Jerusalem. And to all your people, give your heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving you in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We ask you also to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, the President of the United States, and Kamala, Vice President of the United States, Congress, the Supreme Court, and the Governor of Tennessee, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold your gracious hand in all your works, that rejoicing in your whole creation, they may honor you with their substance and be faithful stewards of your bounty. And we humbly ask you of your goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor the family of Joe Wentker, Isla O'Brien, Charlie Brown, Mickey May, the Franklin family, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We pray for the men and women serving our country in the armed forces, Casey Feather, Robert Hagens, Michael House, Caleb Dozier, Dalton Branson, and Peyton Downs. For our postulate for holy orders, Charlie McLean and his family. We pray for all those celebrating birthdays, especially Mike Adams, Lenora Ramsey, Jim McAdoo, and Madeira Davis. And we also bless your holy name for all your servants departed this life, especially Joe Wentker, in your faith and fear, asking you to grant them continual growth in your love and service and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of St. Philip and all your saints that with them we may be partakers of your heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. La paz del Señor se siempre ustedes. Peace, peace to all who are here. Peace, peace, and again, peace to all of you watching. A couple of announcements. Uh, this morning, uh, we are beginning drive-in worship at St. Philip's Episcopal Church, 10 o'clock a.m. If you're watching this service at 9.30, press the record button and dash over to St. Philip's to the parking lot and catch us in person and drive and worship. We'd be glad to see you. That will continue, weather permitting, every Sunday until we're able to gather back together in the nave of the church in person. Uh, additionally, we uh, are offering the daily office during the week here at St. Philip's on Zoom, Monday morning at 8, morning prayer, Wednesday evening at 8, Compline, Friday morning again at 8 a.m., for morning prayer. And we would love to see you join. If you'd like to be part of that um, gathering, send, a, a, I believe you email the church website or you can access it through Happenings. There's a link there. If you have any trouble, call the church, text, or call me and we'll make sure you get connected. Additionally, on the, on the 8th of, no, not on the 8th of April, Maybe on the 8th of April. I'm sorry, I apologize, I don't have the date. It could be the Thursday after Easter or the Thursday after that. I can't quite remember. But we're going to begin midweek Eucharist again at 1 o'clock on Thursdays here at the church in person. And we, uh, you don't need to pre-register for that. Just simply come. That's at 1 o'clock every Thursday. Let's just say the Thursday after Easter, shall we? That would be the 8th of April. We'll begin celebrating a midweek Eucharist. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
This service of Holy Eucharist is given to the glory of God and for the life and witness of our sister Jo Winker of blessed memory. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to our Lord God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets and their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in the unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only, and not for strength, for pardon only, and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. My flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed, says the Lord. My flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed, says the Lord. Those who my flesh and drink my blood dwell in me and I in them my flesh is food indeed and my blood is drink indeed says the Christ, alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. sister, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. My brother, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. My friends, the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So many people to thank. Uh, today, uh, we thank Kathy and Dan Cochran for serving at the altar. I thank Matt uh, Endall for his beautiful music, as always. To our technical crew, Chuck Hardy, Matt Bach. To all of our readers, and to everyone who behind the scenes made this service of worship possible, we are grateful. I would invite you to submit your tithes, offering, or gifts to our website, to the work of St. Philip's, which continues to go on 
Pastoral care goes on here. Worship goes on here. Service to the world goes on here, also on Fairway Drive and beyond. May God's peace be with you. forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.